So uh, what we would call conventional heart bypass surgery would be done through an incision in the chest. So that's a sternotomy incision. That incision is typically uh, somewhere in the range of about that long. So somewhere about eight inches long. We would also have a small incision in the leg uh, where vein from the leg is taken. Uh, the operation itself consists of uh, first uh, getting the mammary artery prepared, so that's the artery we used to do bypass, and at the same time we're uh, taking vein from the leg. Once that uh, process has been uh, taken care of, then uh, the patient is put on a heart-lung bypass machine. Uh, they're given heparin so the blood doesn't clot during that period, put on a heart-lung bypass machine, and then uh, while the heart is, uh, is still and quiet, we would sew the vein uh, to the arteries on the heart and the idea is is actually we're actually bypassing the blockages on the heart so we're not doing anything to the areas that are narrow themselves we're placing our blood a route for blood to go around those blockages um, and some patients may need two others three others four or five bypasses and it's it's individual it's based on the uh, how the patient's uh, arteries are configured and how many blockages they have uh, that whole uh, procedure of, uh, of doing the bypasses and the procedure takes somewhere between three and four hours to do. Yeah, almost every patient that has bypass surgery has atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. We certainly don't know exactly what causes atherosclerosis. Uh, that's uh, certainly an area of active investigation, but uh, in general it's associated with a strong family history of having had uh, heart disease or vascular disease. It's associated with things like diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, high cholesterol. So these are all indications that a person has risk factors for that. On the other hand, certainly there are patients who have, uh, have all those risk factors and don't have coronary artery disease and need bypass, and so there's a, there are some unknowns in the whole process. Typical stay for patients could range anywhere from four to six days. Now, uh, there may be a few patients who are ready to leave after three days, and that's less common, and there might be some patients certainly who start out sick or who may need more time than six days, but somewhere between four and six days after surgery, patients will typically be in an intensive care unit one day. So just the night after surgery, the next day on average, at least 80 to 90% of patients will be ready to move out to a regular uh, step-down unit. I think the thing that would be fair to tell somebody is that certainly at least the day of surgery, the day after surgery, uh, you know, the pain and discomfort is, is there and uh, we, we use uh, uh, pain medicine to make sure that it's controlled as well as possible. And I think most people who've had the procedure would say that after a couple days, uh, they're very uh, comfortable on just uh, oral pain medicine and they go home on that. Patients typically don't need pain medicine after two or three weeks. But I think it would be, if you ask most people who've had bypass surgery, they'd say that they still had a little bit of soreness, a little bit of discomfort, and that may have continued on for several weeks after surgery. Uh, they should typically be back to their normal activities anywhere from three to four weeks after surgery. Some people are ready sooner. Um, and it's usually a couple months through when we do a conventional sternotomy before people can uh, return to all activities, including lifting weights and those types of things. I think across the country there are at least 100,000 uh, heart bypass operations done uh, each year. Uh, that number has actually decreased, which is a good thing for patients with the change in medications. Uh, patients are doing uh, better uh, without ha having the need for bypass surgery, but certainly as people get older uh, uh, in the population and uh, have uh, other diseases like diabetes, etc., they end up uh, sometimes needing heart bypass surgery. And, the good news we have for them is that uh, people are doing well with it. Well, I would say bypass surgery has progressed uh, quite a bit. Uh, you know, certainly back in the 1970s when things were, uh, when the first bypass surgeries were initiated, uh, you know, results uh, were relatively unknown. And then in the 1980s brought in uh, uh, important uh, changes like using a, an internal mammary artery, which really has made a difference in terms of the long-term success rate. and. Really more recently, I think in the 90s and in this decade, uh, we've seen that uh, the survival rates for bypass surgery are extremely good. So that uh, all across the country, 
probably greater than 98%, close to 99% of patients will survive surgery and do uh, very well. And, and I think that the long-term results of bypass surgery are also quite good. I, I think what we can say uh, safely uh, and fairly that patients can get an excellent bypass operation all across the country at different kind of medical centers. There's no question about that. Uh, the difference between a medical center like ours is that we have uh, physicians here who uh, are experienced with not only bypass surgery but with um, uh, more complicated uh, types of technologies and procedures that some patients who have bypass surgery may need. For example, there are patients who have very uh, low heart function who need bypass surgery and those patients might need some additional help uh, before or after surgery with their support of their circulation and we uh, have an excellent program in uh, heart device um, and, and heart transplantation and I think that additional expertise uh, really uh, provides the difference for for those types of patients. And I think for patients who, who don't even need that, uh, we have uh, a center that does a lot of heart surgery, uh, has excellent results across the, the breadth of the spectrum of heart surgery, and I think that's a reason to, uh, that the patient should feel comfortable having their operation here.